People view the Western democratic system of government as the greatest thing to ever be invented because now we the people get to decide who rules over us through elections. Why is Donald Trump, Kamala Harris, RFK Jr. not a short-term solution for people's problems? And uh, why is voting for people in a democracy always wrong, illogical, illegitimate, or against human freedom? Excellent. Well, <laughs> you got us several hours. Um, uh, here's my short answer to that. Maybe, in a sense, maybe people who say that democracy is the greatest uh, thing that we have for running society, may maybe they are right in this sense, in that if your goal is to rule over humanity in the most efficient way possible, um, I like to think of it as iterations of the Matrix for people who might remember that movie, or maybe you don't remember that movie, but essentially we're all living in a computer simulation of the year 1999 in Los Angeles. We're actually strapped into pods, you know, getting this all fed to us through a computer in input into our brains. Um, but one of the points of the Matrix trilogy was that this isn't the first iteration of that Matrix uh, that, that the computers tried to enslave humanity. No, first of all, they tried to give humanity some sort of perfect nirvana utopia where they could have anything they want, but people would pull themselves out of the matrix because they just didn't believe it. It wasn't believable. So they kept refining and rebooting the matrix and making it more and more realistic until you get the world as we know it. And people will gladly keep themselves strapped into that matrix for their entire lives because it contains enough reward and incentive and etc. So I think of the iterations of people trying to control humanity in a similar manner. There have been many iterations of this over the years. And if you go back far enough, people literally were told to worship the Pharaoh or worship the emperor as if that was a literal God on earth. And that is the reason why this person and his family had the right to rule over you. And well, I don't know whether or not I, I can't go and back and interview someone from a couple thousand years ago and ask them if they truly believe that or if they just went along with it. But at any rate, it was the justification that was given at that time. That obviously evolved eventually. Well, really, is this actually God? Well, no, okay, it's uh, God appointing this family. It's a divine right to rule or it's the mandate of heaven and all of this type of chicanery nonsense. Eventually that started to fade away as obviously things develop and the enlightenment and all of this. We don't need that focus focus anymore. No, how best to control humanity after the age of imperial monarchs and others. Well, how about this? How about it's not God appointing someone to rule over you, it is you appointing someone to rule over you. So this is the next reboot of the matrix in which you get a, a stake in this. And so it's your choice who you get to ru get ruled over by. Yay, isn't that great? And it certainly is a more efficient and effective way of getting people to stay in that matrix. If you were going to try to tell people that Biden is a literal God on earth, and that is why he has the right to rule over you, you would be rightly laughed off the face of the planet. But if you say, no, 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 he's the expression of the will of the people and 50% plus one of the population cast a vote for him, many, many people will go along with that. As long as they believe that 50% plus one of the population <laughs> actually voted for him. And that not it interesting that in 2020, that became the focal central point of the whole discussion and debate about the legitimacy of the Biden presidency is whether or not actually 50% plus one of the population or the electoral college or what have you actually did vote for him. No, there's ballot fraud and all of this. So people get it obsessed with how many people actually cast a ballot for this or that can candidate and it all becomes about that. So that is the way that we are ruled over in this system. We participate in that process and we feel like we have a part in it and thus we have ownership as it were of this. Now, as to the second, the latter part of the question about the legitimacy of this voting process or even the morality of this voting process, it certainly should Having put it in that context, it should, for any uh, critically thinking human being, that, that should make you think, well, what is it about 50% plus one of the population putting their piece of paper in this magic box or touching a screen these days? W what is it about that that somehow legitimizes this thing called government that suddenly has this right to rule over this arbitrarily defined geographical area that has just been claimed as the as the domain of this thing 
the called government. And and why why does that process work? What is this process of legitimation? What if it what if we came up with some other way of of imagining how this or that geographical boundaries could be ruled over? And then you have to start questioning, well, okay, what about the 50% minus one of the population who did not vote for this candidate or the other candidate? What makes them beholden to the whims and dictates of that that person who presumes to be ruling over 50% plus one of the population? You do not consent. What if you do not consent to this process at all? What if you don't even cast a vote? What if you're not voting in this process? And so you have absolutely no stake in it. Why does this government have the right to rule over you and set these these laws and, and other things for you? And thus by participating in the process and casting a vote for whatever candidate you cast a vote for, are you thus legitimizing that system and saying, yes, absolutely. Whoever gets 50% plus one of these votes is the rightful ruler of this geographical area and can rule over me and everyone else. And what gives you the right to decide who rules over everyone else. These are all questions that at the very least, I certainly have my own answers to them, but at the very least, I think any critically thinking human being should be asking when it comes to these matters. I agree. And these people that are voting, they kind of want to have control over other people and tell them what to do through the laws or through what their candidate is saying. So, and also if you think of the, the Jewish people in Nazi Germany, like, are they morally obliged to believe the laws and that that's the right thing? And if they follow, if they don't follow the law, they're like bad or they deserve the punishment that the law says. So I mean, you could just question it. I, I, would, I would like people to question it at its core, you know, at its philosophical, you know, core of what they're trying to tell you. Well, perhaps, perhaps we can start by making a distinction between law and government, because those two things do not have to go together. And the fact that they are so wedded in our minds that we can't imagine law without government is actually to our detriment because... A lot of people will say, okay, anarchy, get rid of government. That'll just be chaos because you need laws. I mean, what? You're just murder, rep, rape, theft, whatever. It's full crime spree, whatever people want to do. Well, no, not necessarily. How could you have gov uh, laws without government? Well, how did this thing used to work way back in the day? For example, back several centuries ago, back in somewhere like England, where they had common law, which is a series, uh, it's uh, the concept of rather than, because here's another distinction that we need to make. In our vocabulary, in the current day and age, we think of law as something that is written down by one of these magical lawgivers in the holy seat of power in government. And they write this down and then that becomes a law that then becomes enforced by the enforcers of this state. But what, uh, that is not necessarily the definition of law. That is a definition of a type of law. But it, uh, as opposed to that, contradistinct, in contradistinction to that, there is the concept of common law, which is a evolving, not written down, series of rules and norms of a given locality that have been gaveled down over the course of years, decades, generations, that forms a body of law that is understood to pertain in a certain community. And that concept of law does not require some ruler to come down with an iron fist and say, okay, now you cannot murder because I have written it on this piece of paper. No, we understand that you cannot murder because that is the way that this community functions and has functioned for generations back into time immemor immemorial. That is the kind of distinction we have to say. To, to say no government is not to say no concept of law, no way of enforcing some sort of norms or standards in a community, no. But it's to say that we do not need a ruler to write it down on a piece of paper in order for it to become law. Yeah, I mean, there's, I was going to mention other ways, like the people who mention natural law, natural rights, or the the declaration stuff. But also if, I mean, that's people, I can understand why some people will say, well, I'm an atheist, what the hell is that? <laughs> so, I mean, it's eventually, like, it's just common sense type stuff, or looking at the past, looking at human actions, or just seeing what works. Obviously, you, you could tell if a, a society is good or bad based on what they're allowing, not allowing, or promoting, or... Yeah, I mean, I think people just have that natural good. But my next question... Actually, I just had a quick comment that I wrote down. In, in the most dangerous superstition, uh, Larkin Rose, he says that the government is an elected class, and once they get that power, they automatically have new rights that we the people would not normally have, such as charging taxes when 
if I were to do that to somebody, they would say, you're extorting me. Or if I tell them, get a permit, because uh, I'm the authority of this business or this sector. But um, Mark Passio also says, like, when cops put on their little uniform or their costume, now they have some magical rights to do stuff that when they're off the clock, they cannot do. <laughs> they can't invade somebody's house. They can't. Well, it depends mm, for drugs. Like, let's say for drugs, you can't do that. So, so yeah, that's just a comment. And then the next question is, why is human authority declared through government illegitimate? And why is, why do people, how do people break that belief that they have to follow that like let's say a weed law or some jaywalking law, I don't know, any law that doesn't really make sense. Why Why are they not morally obligated or, yeah, why is it not true? All right. Well, once again, I think, as I was saying before, I think that the distinction that we have to make in our mind is the concept of law as something that is written down and thus must be followed versus something that is a standard of the community in which we live which we may or may not have our own personal disagreements with, but at any rate, that has been instituted over a process of the development of a body of law over generations. And if we think of laws as something that simply something that is written down on a piece of paper by a, a lawgiver, then that begs the question of the morality, the inherent morality of a law. So something is perfectly fine until that lawgiver writes down, oh, by the way, you shouldn't murder. Oh, oh, now it's wrong, and now we should be beholden to it. Of course not. That, on its face, is obviously nonsense. And we all understand that, but people kind of forget that, and the concept of law gets elided in their minds. So, once again, I would say that, for in my own uh, conception, it is the body of law that accrues and, and uh, becomes a standard over a period of time that is law. And that doesn't rely on the concept of natural law, because yes, I certainly do believe there is natural law and natural rights. And for example, the right to life is fundamental and you cannot take that from me. However, there are absolutely, of course, there are going to be gray areas in all sorts of different things. And well, who was right in this particular instance, given these circumstances. And that is the type of thing that has to be adjudicated. And any given judge can and presumably will be wrong, at least some of the time. We're all humans. We will all make mistakes. We're in, in, uh, in, imperfect. We are all fallible. So the, it should never rest on one person, one lawgiver, one judge. It should be this process of over time. Oh, this community has adjudicated this in this way for this length of time. And it becomes more and more uh, the, the weight of that becomes greater as time goes goes by. And that's the way I think of it. It's a development and discovery of these laws rather than the writing down and the instantiation of these laws. Right, yeah. And I mean, ideally, people, the whole, all of our human society will be going to a, a greater direction unless you believe like, oh, humans are dumb. They're all, we're all going to blow each other up and be stupid. But I remember when I was in school here in California, they, they would show us a little video of a, a bill <laughs> and it was just saying, I'm just a bill. Yes, I'm only a Then it bill. shows like how a bill becomes a law or try to mm. teach you uh, what laws are. Right. Uh, yeah, well, laws... actually also, yeah, let's think about it from that perspective because um, yes, in a system like I'm talking about with common law that accrues over time and that it's a discovery process, we are discovering what laws and standards and rules pertain to this or that community. That means that there is no one single person who can come in and change it all and make it all uh, basically rule by decree and by fiat. No, 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 no. We, we've determined over the course of generations, hundreds, thousands, tens of thousands of cases that this is the way that we act. And there, yes, there will always be some corrupt person or some completely inept person who will come along and rule on the wrong side uh, deliberately or otherwise. But that particular ruling will not rule against the, the overwhelming body of law that has accrued over the course of generations. And I think that's an important point. In a state of system where law is whatever the lawmaker writes down, then you better believe, yeah, all these people who are, yay, yay, Trump, he's going to save us, yay. And he can write whatever presidential directives he wants and do whatever he wants. And then suddenly Biden gets in power. Oh, no, I can't believe that all of these powers that we gave to the person we like have suddenly landed in the per lap of the person we don't like. Oh, it's the end of the world, which, of course, makes 
the voting, the, the democratic process, even more important to the average statist because it is literally a game for all the marbles. The lawmaker can write down whatever law he wants. So this is the most important thing in the world. Yes, somebody can come in tomorrow and completely change morality. <laughs> so we better devote all of our time, all of our energy, all of our resources to investing all of everything that we have, our identity itself, into this voting process. It, I understand from a state of perspective, people who believe that lawmakers literally do write down laws and literally change the fat moral fabric of the universe with their decrees. I understand why people take that so seriously and get so caught up in it. But I'm just saying, hey, actually, you know what? Let, let's let's leave that to the side and let's let's explore this other concept of law. I believe that respecting individual human freedom will result in the greatest flowering of the human species, that we will be able to reach our potential if we are unfettered by the chains of government. But I, I know that's a hard sell for people because they can't, again, begin to wrap their minds around how we could possibly function fruitfully without a central controller literally controlling everything we do, despite the fact that Unbeknownst to us, we don't think about it, but 99.9% .9 of everything we do in our lives is done under anarchy. You do not have, at least at this point, you do not have the government coming in and telling you what clothes to wear today, who to date, what job. You you must do this job. You This is your life. We have so much freedom in so many aspects of our lives that we don't even think about and wouldn't even think to question, of course. Of course I chose what to wear today, and I'm not particularly fashionable, so it was probably a bad choice. But I still don't want the government to come in and tell me what to wear. And in the exact same fashion, can we just extend that to the other parts of our lives which are not negotiable, not subject to this freedom? And what would be the disaster that happens if that does happen? Again, there are the idiots with the straw man that come in and say, oh, it'll just be people killing and raping and going on a pillaging spree, as if our... Uh, as if I, fundamentally, I wouldn't care, whatever, you can murder me or whatever, whatever, you're free will, man, no, 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 whatever you want to do. As if I have no part to play in that or in my own defense. And as if every single person in the world wouldn't be incentivized to have security for themselves and their family. In fact, I think the, the, that incentive it would be even stronger in a society where we don't put that burden on some third party government thing that's gonna come along and protect us most of the time. But if they don't, what are you gonna do? You can't, po police have immunity from prosecution. So you, uh, if they do something wrong, you can't do anything about it. If they fail to protect you, they actually in the United States, for example, it's been ruled the police don't have a duty to protect you. So if they don't, if they don't bother to protect you, well, uh, there's nothing you can do about that. What are you gonna do? The security is a monopoly game that is played by the dictators who we uh, presumably in my audience at any rate most people know are psychopaths who have this desire to rule over you do not have your best interests in mind why are we relying on them for our secure security and then defending that that's the only way we could possibly secure ourselves and our family is to give all of that seed all of that authority for our own protection to some independent well not even independent some completely controlled creature of the psychopaths that are attempting to rule over us it is that is insanity but again we we are like fish we cannot see the water we're swimming in and we're in statist land so of course everything has to be done through this vehicle called government are you ready hey think you can tell us what to do you think you can tell us what to wear? You think that you're better? Well, you better get ready. Bow to the masters. <laughs>